Hello everyone, my name is Anastasia, I'm from China and this is my channel about cross stitch. Welcome! Um, I know I'm a little bit late with my stitchy update. <laughs> Today is uh, 1st of August, Saturday. I should have made a video last week, but you know, life kicked in so I couldn't do it on time. I had this idea to try and film after work but I usually return at 7 p.m. and there is not much um, uh, light outside and I'm not really doing videos inside with the yellow light. It will make all the colors so different. <laughs> so I had to wait for a new weekend to do it and here I am. Um, life update. Um, so first of all, my visa situation right now is quite stable, all right. Uh, I got extension today, um, actually yesterday, uh, till the middle of September. So I have another month and a half to protest my work visa again and uh, uh, wait till this one kicks in. So it's fine. At least I will know in advance if it doesn't and I will have time to pack and go back home or make a new plan. I don't know. Like, I'm keeping positive on this side, so not gonna stress out about this one. So, uh, on the other hand, work was quite busy. Um, the weather just decided not to make any my work any easier, you know, like half of the days it's either um, killing heat. <laughs> so whenever I take the kids outside, they're like sweaty and crying after 20 minutes under this heat or it's like raining so hard we can't even go out to play usually we would put the kids in their rain coats and rain boots and go play in the puddles but it's raining so hard that it's not possible so half of the days we spend in the pool half of the days we just spend at home which adds an extra an hour and a half of active games with them for me which makes me more tired and less stitchy time in the evenings because if I'm tired and exhausted by the end of the you by the end of the day I won't be staying up late and stitching as usual so yeah these three weeks I can't say I was stitching less than usual but my progress was considerably less i think i think about it some of you asked about the chinese cross stitch and i would try to put the videos or the photos whichever i can find here So as I said, Chinese people prefer cross stitch on a printed canvas and they really love big pieces. Like whenever they see me doing a little, little cross stitch, they're like, what's that? <laughs> what, what, like, which family heirloom is that? I'm like, that's not, it's just for decoration. And another question they always ask me is like, do you sell your cross stitch? I'm like, uh, no. Like, I'm not on that level of cross stitch, I think, to sell my stuff. Like, um, I'm not against the idea of selling anything, but uh, I just don't mm, know how to do it correctly here, since the logistics would be the first and biggest questions from China. Uh, another one is like, uh, I'm not so confident about my work. Like, I see it as a masterpiece, but other people may see it as not. <laughs> uh, so I'm not that care uh, confident about like price ranging and stuff. So I'm not selling my stuff, just giving away as uh, gifts sometimes. But I don't think Chinese people understand that uh, I just do stuff for fun and not for profit. They're really like money concerned. <laughs> So the last month was a jolly July for me. So the whole month I was stitching only Christmas and um, winter and uh, like um, ornaments <laughs> related things. So um, it's usually not my, not my favorite 
uh, theme in cross stitch I usually prefer something very colorful maybe floral or animals or something like that so snow and everything related to it isn't my favorite part but you know I have to have some Christmas decorations so I thought it was high time to start it and uh, give it a go you know like even if I don't finish anything like July was my second month this year which I haven't finished anything and one of the reasons is some of the projects were bigger than my normal ones and some of the reasons were like I think I was a little um, tired of just finishing things so I wanted just seven days of consistent stitching so like last week I was stitching for a long time like maybe seven days um, one project another week another project this week I was stitching a secret stitch which is one of my whips and I cannot show it but I can talk about it like usual so uh, one of my friends she's a designer uh, she uh, her name is uh, Anna Shishkina and uh, she actually designed the dragons I have been doing on a t-shirt and a sweatshirt so and she asked if me and some other girls can do a model stitch for her but it's it should be a secret stitch so i can't show it around and um, for a russian cross stitch journal uh, magazine so uh, i don't know if my work will be published <laughs> but uh, i will try to make the best photos right now i'm on a 40 percent mark and i've been stitching it like four days and uh, I'm pretty sure I can um, kick it in another week but I'm not gonna spend all my life only stitching this project like I will um, separate maybe half of the day I'll be stitching this project and not like lunch times I will be stitching one project another like in the evenings I will be stitching another one because so far consistent stitching was working well for me so I didn't go burned out or lost my stitcher bag but I'm already a little bit tired of having only one stitchy project and I wasn't that eager to come back home from work and just stitch again so I think I need some um, changes some differences and uh, maybe having two projects uh, like active projects like I have more than two but maybe having just two active projects will work out for me better so what I have been stitching while you haven't seen me and what can I show to you? Uh, one of the projects I have been stitching was the Santa from The Charms of Christmas by Leisure Art. Um, my, one of my friends uh, gave, uh, gave me this book in the Secret Santa Exchange and this was on my like high priority list for a long time. I really loved how the Santa looks like. So of course, when it's jolly July, I just had to start it. Um, and this is my progress so far. It's, it's not that big, but it's not that small, I would say. I think there are around uh, mm, 20 hundred stitches here, maybe a little bit more. Oh, let me fold it a little so I can show it better. Yeah. So I'm stitching it on a 30 count uh, Ukrainian even weave. I know in um, linen it would look better, but I didn't have uh, linen in this like um, moko color. I wanted it to be um, almost exact color as on the front page. So I just chose what I have and so far I'm pretty happy with it. Like uh, it's not a big, um count so it wouldn't be like ginormous but it's not so small that i can't stitch it like on a go i just hoop it up in a medium size hoop and uh, stitch some of the parts so i started with the bag and uh, some of the mm, christmas tree then that's the background and then the santa with his cape and uh, i think that's like mouth <laughs> but it looks like a nose right it looks like a nose <laughs> so and some of the beard like some of the whites already stitched in so yeah this is how I stitch I just pick up a color 
I go stitch this color, I pick a next color, I stitch this next color next to it, and they just go, go, go around, like filling in random colors. Um, usually I may be more consistent in the parts I've been stitching, but here I just went through like what the color of the day I wanted. Like today I wanted like to fill in red, so I picked a red, I fill in one shade, another shade, another shade, then just like picked in maybe whites or blues or whatever. It's because this is a long-term project. I'm not 100% sure I will be finishing it this year. Mm, so, but I'm really loving it. So I'm not gonna abandon it for long, but it's still, I can't say it's easy and small enough for me to just stitch it fast enough and I don't know if I want to frame it yet. So I just need to fill this project, you know? I need to long time and to fill this one and to come to a conclusion what I want to do with it. So far, I have this idea of framing it or maybe like a Christmas pillow because it's gonna be big. I give him very good margins, but it's still gonna be huge. So, maybe Christmas pillow and like really good like velvet back and uh, some trim and I think that and like very very big and squishy well I think that would be nice so one more thing I staged was my Merry Christmas with dogs which doesn't look like it at all let me see again put something behind it it's too see-through this one yeah so Merry Christmas with dogs by Nadezhda Nagorne uh, it's a Russian designer and this is I think the uh, first design I've tried by her so far I like it but there's so many quarter stitches like so far maybe I did a couple of hundred quarter stitches and you can't even even see them because the quarter stitches are in the green tree I mean I would understand quarter stitches in like presents and uh, like in some toys but lots of quarter stitches are just in the tree which makes me ask questions are they really needed there so so far you can see I stitched some of the tree this is the dog's paw and maybe a muzzle these are some of the holes which I will be filled with um, uh, Christmas balls. This will be the um, candy cane and two presents. This is how I stitch it. it it's a little more than 2400 stitches. And uh, this one I stitch on 25 count um, Zweigert linen. Uh, so it's gonna be huge again. I gave it good margins, but it's gonna be huge because like the tree is only half of the picture another half gonna be the dogs so I really like it. I have some questions about it uh, And again, it's gonna be a long-term project can't finish it like in a Long run, you know, like I will be finishing maybe this year next year. I don't know uh, but I really need to work on it first. So this is how far was my start. And I like how it looks. <sighs> Whenever I ask my friends, hey, what do you think it is? <laughs> they were like, uh, is it a chicken? Then another uh, friend was like, I know you stitch dragons. Is that like, some kind of like dragon with like spitting something and he has legs and everything? Oh, one more uh, said that it's like zombie salad because like mm, the leaves and the lettuce and everything just uh, uh, get back from the graves and decided to <laughs> kill the humanity. So um, if you don't see the picture, you don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's actually pretty nice. So these were my Jolly July projects, Christmas in July projects, Kismas in July projects, like whichever you follow. Like I just do like all the winter and Christmas stuff during all July. So the last week of July, 
I didn't start anything new. I just did my secret project and filled in some couple hundred stitches on Santa. So this is how Jolly July finished. And today is the first day of what? Of August. And it's arbitrary August. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was uh, a stitching mummy who started arbitrary August or she was one of the first to do it because um, whenever I hear someone doing arbitrary August, they all refer to stitching mummy and she was one of the first whom I heard from about it. So that's, that's really nice. I have no idea where it came from, but I'm doing it. <laughs> so what is arbitrary August? Arbitrary August is when you make a random decision wheel on your phone or like you can uh, pick up the papers or from a hat or any, any way you want it with all your projects or with like some amount of your projects. So uh, you will stitch randomly some of the things during this August <laughs> and you don't need to choose what you are stitching the app or the papers will do it for you. So what I decided to do is that I will do the same this year because it will be my first arbitrary August and I just want to take a piece, I mean, take a try, why not? Because uh, before I used to travel in August and I usually have only one or two active projects during that time because like in travels you can't take all of your cross stitch with you. But since I know that I will be staying put in China at least till the middle of September, I can enjoy my arbitrary August in the fall. So I will be showing you uh, a little we parade, uh, excluding those two projects you already seen, and uh, telling you what I, if these projects will be called out, what I will try to manage. Like, I'm not saying I will, like, spin the wheel every day. Maybe every three, four days or whenever I finish a project or whenever I go to a good stopping point. Like, on a big piece like this, a good stopping point will be 500 stitches, maybe? Or one of the dogs or one of the, like, uh, pieces of the design on other things I think that I can finish up because some of them just require some backstage or like we will see what it goes, right? So one of the latest whips, yeah, I will go from the recent one to the oldest, maybe like that. So one of the recent whips is my uh, owl bear from Vika Jukaeva. Uh, her uh, nickname is Makaronka Stitch and she designed this little cute um, owl mutants <laughs> oh, like there is an owl bear and this one is owl deer and there is an owl fox and owl cat so they are kind of like something in between so as you see um, this one still needs some backstage in the background and that's where i'm a kind of stuck i can't decide which i want more like I have this real good variegated orange thread. I have the blue one, which I think will look cute. And I have a little darker blue. Like I'm not sure about this color, but since this thread really had some darks and on a yellow, it looks really nice. Like half of the dark, half of the lighter pink, purple, purplish pink, something in between. <laughs> so, I'm not sure, like, originally I was thinking, like, it's purple, mm, owl bear is purple, so oranges and yellows would look really nice next to it, but at the same time I'm kind of afraid that it will blend in, especially this yellows will blend in with the lemon background. I'm stitching it on 30 count uh, even with Ukrainian, so it's kind of very small and uh, like some of the uh, some of the pieces of the design are quite very small so i'm not sure if i want them to blend and not be seen like from far you see like 
you still can see like there is a design there is a picture <laughs> so i'm thinking about that if you have any suggestions just hit me up um tell me in the comments what you would prefer more it's so hot here sorry i need a drink i hope my face is not that red as i see it um i'm doing energy drinks today because usually um Floss tube videos drain my energy so badly, but I still have lots of stuff to do today. So I can't relax. I need to go. <laughs> Always on the go. So this is one of the projects which will, I hope will be called out or like, I, I would really like to finish this one out. So um, I will just finish the backstage. That would be it. Like, I mean, not a big one. Um, next project, uh, which I also started during the Jolly July, was the Futa scarf and the blah 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 happy. So it's a little boar in a scarf, in a Gryffindor scarf. <laughs> uh, it just have a name which I ne can never remember. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Again, it's why one of my favorite uh, designers, Vika Jukayeva, Makaronka Stitch. So this is how far I got on this one. It's like his head and the beginning of the scar. So it's not a big stitch, but one of the problems I'm having with this is that um, right now I can't print out my PDFs for free. And yes, I am that cheap, so I don't want to go out and print them. And I'm, I'm trying to stitch it from my laptop, which is not really so convenient and they can take it out with me for um, like lunchtime to, to stitch it while the kids nap or something. I can do it only at home. So that's why I think the progress on this was so small and it has dangling thread, so huge. But it's a blend, so I can't uh, take it out unless it's finished. Yeah, so whatever, don't mind it. <laughs> So uh, what I was thinking about this one, if it will get cold, I will try to finish all the axes. Like it only has the back and a little bit in his face and scarf. So another maybe thousand stitches, um, but it's relatively small and it will really give me um, a feeling of accomplishment to at least stitch some part of it. Um, and. I really hate when my stitches look like this, when you can't understand what it is at all. Like, I'm one of the, I'm one of those stitchers who hate showing the progress <laughs> when it's like not, there is no finish part, when it's like just a random amount of blotches of color. <laughs> yep. So that's why I hope next time I will take it out. I will be able to finish all the axes or at least I will work on it unless until I feel like I'm satisfied with my progress. Sorry, another distraction. Mosquitoes. So one more uh, whip is uh, um, fox in a scarf with a mug by um, Mila Vosht, uh, another Russian stitcher and uh, another Christmas project. Um, uh, you can see his sweater, uh, but I think for this time I will be just trying to finish the sweater and maybe take a mug with it. So I'm not planning on finishing this one. Nah, never. It's too big. Like, it still have a whole head, legs, and a huge tail. So I'm not gonna finish this, especially if it's on 32 count Murano in Petit Point. And I hate it. I don't know why, but this is like the worst fabric for me ever. Like, I like, I kind of like 32 second count, 32 count, but I hate Petit Point. Like. The feeling when you stick your needle through these uh, printed uh, dots, it's awful. And I'm all 
about the feeling of floss and the fabric. It's kind of stiff also, not my favorite. One more whip is a Halloween girl uh, by another Russian designer. Uh, I started it as a part of uh, diversity and inclusion style and uh, representation matters style. So um, some stitchers on floss tube wanted to make a statement or um, show that Black Lives Matter and I fully support the movement. I am totally against any any source or any kinds of racism about, against any people, not only black people, but of course, since it was the major issue. So uh, the point of the cell was to stitch uh, any, any person with black, brown or color skin. So, uh, and lots of YouTubers and lots of cross stitchers just converted their fancy ladies like Mirabilia's and everything into like darker skin tones but I haven't done Mirabilia before and I wasn't in the mood to start any so I kind of tried to find just a pattern with a black lady and this one what caught my eye so I kind of finished all her skin so if she will get cold out, maybe I will try to stitch her mask and her hair. Um, I think if I will manage just that, I will be pretty happy to just put her down. And uh, uh, originally I thought about like making her my um, Halloween project. So I'm not in a hurry to finish her or anything. Plus she really brings me joy. Like the colors just pop up on this fabric so beautifully. Like every time I just look at it, even not if I'm stitching on it, but just look at it, it's already bringing me happiness. So I'm quite quite happy if she just skips in my pile of whips. But if she just gets cold out, face mask and maybe hair. We'll see how it goes. Because if I will have more time, uh, I will get more work done. If less, then just a couple of hundred stitches probably. Another whip was my start during Mania. Uh, this is actually one of my last starts during Mania, which is still not finished. And I'm talking about Be Well and Cross Stitch Freebie uh, by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Um, same problem here as uh, with the boar. I don't have. Um, I don't have it on my phone, so I have to stitch from PDF, so I do it from my laptop and uh, since it's not convenient to take with me, I can do it only at home, after work, before I sleep, when I'm tired, <laughs> so I haven't picked it up since then. Mm. What I like about it is the absolutely stunning variegated like hand-dyed fabric, which I dyed myself. <laughs> yeah, but it looks okay, amazing. So I'm doing this one, no, two over one. Yes, two over one half cross on uh, maybe 36 count. I would say it's 32 or either 36, but since I dyed it, it's probably became something in the middle of them. So, what I was thinking about if this one gets cold out is that maybe I will do a rock or some of the vines, like just one of the elements of the pattern. Like I will definitely not go for a full finish, but just one of the elements would do nicely. So next whip was my uh, summertime. This one. I keep putting everything in front of my face. Sorry, it's a new location, so I will get used to it in time. <laughs> everything takes so much time. So it's summertime by Miroshka. Uh, I think it's Ukrainian company. And it was a kit. It is a kit, which I have. But I substituted fabric to one of the hand-dyed fabrics. Um, I, got the, uh, I got this as a gift, um, like win in a giveaway but it was kind of a couple of years ago and uh, this fabric was sitting in my stash so 
I already don't know who it's from and it doesn't have any tags like sometimes my fabric have the tags like at least what count is it or like the names or anything uh, some diaries they keep their company names or the dire names on the text too that's that's so helpful but some of them don't so if they don't I tend to forget a lot and uh, so I'm ashamed and sorry but can't help it I know some of you are very interested in this fabric but it's just a hand dyed so probably you can ask a dyer to repeat like the blues and whites so it has a very nice texture of a um, sky so I decided not to stitch on a brown fabric but try it out like a field in the middle of the day something like that like should be nice um, it's a 16 count Ada uh, usually I don't stitch on Ada maybe that's why it was staying in my stash so long not because I don't like Ada but because uh, most of my projects are heavily backstitched and has a lot of blends and uh, quarter stitches so Ada is not uh, like the best choice for them um, but since this project originally went on Ada in his kit so I was like yeah that's a nice substitute and it totally goes with it so what I have is like I have this poppy almost fully finished and the bird and if I will pick it up maybe I will try to finish the um, seed boxes and another poppy <sighs> I know I had a comment how they originally are named but just words <laughs> words are difficult today in the morning um, I'm very sorry about it <laughs> seed pots yes they are named seed pots i will remember it forever <laughs> so maybe i will try to shoot up and see how tall it will be like there is another bird i think somewhere here so i may touch that bird i don't know like i will see what how what will be in my mood what mood i will be in <laughs> language is difficult at all <laughs> I'm very sorry. Give me some slack. It's my second language. <laughs> so, just maybe 500 stitches. That's it. And, uh, one more project is I started it in February. I started it in February. It was in Thailand um, when I was on vacation and I was out of any cross stitch. So, I had to go and find the cross stitch shop and it was like the first crochet shop i found in years and they didn't have a big variety of um, projects that i liked like there was no uh, they were like very simple and basic uh, designs but they had some of the um, heritage clayton circles and somehow this one caught my eye i don't know why because i'm not a winter stitcher uh, and they were some of the like summer fields and the boats the ones that i right now i think i would like better but this one caught my eye and i think mainly because the sheep were so cute and another one is that it reminded me of like some movie theme or like you know the style you see like only in movies because for the last maybe five years in my life i haven't seen much snow at all i've been living in thailand in vietnam uh, now in china and uh, i haven't seen snow in a while like it usually snows here in china one day a year uh, last year it snowed one day in april and the snow just melted instantly so not much snow here so i kind of really miss it <laughs> but still not really ready to stitch it all the time now this is how far i got um during my first week of um, jolly july and i think if it will get cold out i will just continue stitching on uh, this part of it and will try to cover like i don't think i will cover the fourth but i think i will try to cover this part before the snow like the purples mm. this project is also on ada like 14 count white ada i'm just using the kit floss the kit 
fabric and even the needle from the kit it's always on this project but um, I was originally thinking about substituting the fabric but the ver choice of fabrics in that cross stitch shop wasn't great and I wasn't about to wait and uh, mm, not stitch anything so I started it the same day I bought it um, yeah it broke my rule of stitch the stash this year because I've been doing stitch the stash not the one from the Facebook but the one the Russian cross stitchers do like uh, the rules are you have to stitch all the projects in your stash already like which were there by the beginning of January 2020 and uh, you can buy things but you can't stitch them and uh, uh, so I try not to buy anything because if I buy things I want to stitch them right away and I stitch all the things I have in my possession already or freebies um, like this it gives me a little variety and I don't get burned out by stitching only the things I already had and like the things I had for years I've been looking at them and probably already stitched them with my eyes but um, it still gives me a little diversity and occasionally I will take some modal stitch or a secret stitch so um, like modal stitch I did with the orange dragon and aringiri or the one I'm doing right now with some little cute animal so uh, it will still keep me on track um, but probably next year I will just go wild <laughs> but I will try to keep this year at least uh, to stitching to all the stuff I already have plus it helps me a lot not to spend too much money because uh, with this pandemic situation I'm in a kind of unstable work situation right now um, like I didn't have work for at least four and a half months so and no income for four and a half months so any extra spends on um, cross stitch or shopping or whatever it really hits my budget a lot so keeping with the stitch from stash really helps me just to maintain a healthy and stable life <laughs> it's not sunny today but it's super hot and humid so i'm sorry if i look gross i think i am and it makes my hair look whatever I will not complain about my hair so one more project um, which I have is um, um, the Halloween cats sampler which I turned into um, Halloween decorations on plastic so they are on plastic they haven't been FFO'd yet so no felt in the background yet uh, they were stitched on um, see-through like gray plastic which is very soft but at the same time it's very sturdy so um, unless I really want to break them I won't so this sampler has five cats so I have a ghost cat with a little treat box I have a witchy hat cat with the I added the lantern from the middle of the pattern into its hands because I will feel it like it would look nicer and it does and I have a cauldron with a little cat something like that yeah um, on the sampler I still have two more cats I have Dracula cat and the cat that pops up from a giant pumpkin and I'm thinking about giving that cat uh, like two candy wands in each hand like the ones you can see on the sampler the one the candy cane and uh, the real wand with a star I think I'm thinking about stitching it on plastic and giving it its wands so I will see how it goes if I can manage that <laughs> uh, but so far um, it's been nice I think I finished I started uh, them November maybe 
no 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 november i started uh halloween pumpkins by maria brovko these are the sampler by nadezhda alenik so i started them in january and i finished the three parts in february but by the time these are like second sampler or second pattern of halloween cats that i'm stitching on plastic second set of halloween cats that i'm stitching on plastic so i was burned out on stitching on plastic maybe i will restart stitching on plastic again and uh, these are really good for stitching on a go like uh, the fabric doesn't get crampled you don't need to mind the tension you just have your little piece of plastic and you can go wherever so i don't have much travel time right now but i still have lunch time stitching uh, when the kids are sleeping and it's usually like a couple of hours which i also have my lunch and sometimes read a book so it's not like i'm stitching a couple of hours maybe like an hour or something uh, but if they will get cold i think i will stitch maybe a dracula cat or maybe full or just the stitches um, i'm not sure how long it will take but usually they are pretty fast like maybe three four days i can bang out the cat um one of my, uh, one more thing i still can consider as a whip is uh, this hanger whatever it is uh, cat uh, with a little cup it was um free sell by uh, Svetlana Nemiritska maybe last year i think last year around february or march i think march it was maybe for the women's day uh, so when i uh, it was my first time trying to afford it in this way as a oh, pinky as a pinky so what i did is i mounted on a cardboard i put the felt in the back i put the cording i even give it a little heart which says made with love uh, but in the process it got some glue spots like i've never done it before so i didn't know what type of glue i should use or which type of glue i shouldn't use and uh, with this being on i think 28 count linen it's a very see-through linen very easily got soaked with the glue so right now it's kind of ruined yeah you, you can easily see the spots so everyone can see them um so what i'm thinking of doing is that maybe adding some blue butterflies because it's already so chocolate and gray uh, i'm thinking about uh, it has a blue bow and a blue cup a little bit here and here so I'm thinking about adding some blue felt butterflies, so I will need maybe to cut them out or uh, stitch their wings in some way, do whatever. And just gluing them on these spots and around like, like it's a twirl of butterflies just sprouting around the cat drinking tea. Mm, something whimsical and uh, mm, kind of happy. Uh, I don't know how it will look good or if you have another suggestions how better to cover all these spots but for now I'm thinking butterflies I'm thinking light blue I'm thinking felt and I need to get it done <laughs> and I have seemed like with the stitching and work I have never have time to really um, get back to felting <laughs> so this will be also on my whip wheel or arbitrary august wheel if it will get cold out i will spend as many days as i need and finish it okay so another um, project i have is my story time sampler by frosted pumpkin stitchery um, by this time i would say it's a collaboration of story time uh, of frosted pumpkin stitchery and me because <laughs> i use their original patterns like uh, um, alice in wonderland and peter pan and i also um, changed their patterns 
like I use uh, the girl from one pattern and the horse from another to make a pee long stocking and I created my own as a Winnie the Pooh and the red wall. I also um, have um, just get inspira inspired by Instagram. So I will definitely have Harry Potter here and I will include the Instagram uh, tag for the lady who originally uh, designed it um, for herself but um, I know she she isn't against everyone else using it the same way so uh, if this project will get called out uh, I think I will just stitch one of the frames probably this one and uh, um, can you guess which will it be because it's emerald green <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's very easy to guess. So I think I will at least finish this one and uh, have the first row done. So this is for one of them and the last, the oldest and the biggest. I'm looking here because it's here. Yeah. Um, are my uh, persimmons and uh, magpies by Sue Craft. Uh, it was originally a kit, uh, which I'm still using the floss from, but um, the Ada, which was in the kit, it was 16 count um, gray printed Ada. Uh, I think it was like 27 inches on 27 inches, so it was huge. Um, but in the process of stitching, I noticed it got some rusty spots on it, uh, like little pinches of rust uh, maybe it's some problem with the um, print but the print was mostly like just the shades of the sleeves uh, the shade of this maybe leaf and the words so I thought it's not that um, needed and I substituted it to the 28 count linen which I dyed myself in this light blue color and um, so far I've been stitching it two over one half cross and this is how it's small and this is how I didn't know how to measure the margins and also how I didn't know how to dye fabrics without it fraying so <laughs> don't judge me it was one of the first projects that I substituted fabric for so I didn't think much about it. Actually, the thing that I thought is that if it's like 27 in yeah, 27 inches on 27 inches, it should be like four times smaller because the fabric is not 16 count but 28 count. So I chose the fabric exactly four times smaller. So and it's not. So probably. I cut out some of the leaves here and probably this leaf will get cut out but it's not much like I will still get the whole picture done and if I wouldn't tell no one could tell it looks amazing from afar and it doesn't even have backstitch I mean it doesn't really need one but I still will add some backstitch as on the chart for the leaves and a little bit for the magpies like here and a little bit for the postmans like in the middle you can see but uh, this garden is like actually is full of birds and there is a huge magpie here she's she's just walking over there so it's like this is my project about china uh, originally i started this project with another thought in my head but i had to restart it so this is my Chinese project. This is, this will be a big reminder for me about China. Mm. Not that I'm living, but just every time I will see it, I'm like, yeah, magpies, because they became the symbol for me. So, um, they, uh, I don't have any shout outs this week because I haven't watched FlossTube that much. 
I watch it occasionally and uh, uh, but I didn't prepare any uh, names and pictures so not this time maybe next time um, but for those of you who are interested in um, Chinese culture or how the real China looks like right now uh, it's uh, I have a suggestion for a channel uh, it's not a historical channel so no like mm, long historical whatever it's actually a very fun and uh, um, entertainment entertaining channel about li these little uh, videos uh, about China uh, the guys who are making it I think they are either comics or stand-ups uh, or uh, I don't know the, what they're actually doing in life but it seems like it's like a full-time job for them so the whole video the whole channel is full of just real funny and uh, wonderful videos but every video contains truth like uh, yeah you will laugh your ass out you will never believe it but it contains a lot about how Chinese people see foreigners how foreigners uh, behave in China and uh, how uh, maybe inter right interracial relationship works and the dif differences between like relationships in China and in other countries so if you are interested in the modern China and like uh, the foreigner perception of it of people who live here so I would recommend this channel it's called Mama Hu Hu and uh, um, it's all in English <laughs> yeah there are some videos with uh, Chinese um, speech but they all have uh, English subtitles so um, I really enjoy it and it's fun and uh, most of the time I'm watching it I'm like yeah that's so true it's hilarious but it's so true uh, what are my plans gonna be for the next two weeks or first of all tomorrow probably or um, probably tomorrow I'm planning to film a tag uh, I will have a special guest who will ask me these questions so I'm thinking about either doing Rolodex random tag or the pandemic tag but maybe two of them why not I will try to keep the video short and uh, maybe a little fun uh, I'm not sure I'm confident enough to make a tag by myself to just like sitting and stitching and uh, answering questions I think I don't really like watching people mm, stitch with me because I listen to people but I get too distracted by looking at the stitching <laughs> all the time so I think I, um, I prefer the tags where people sit with a camera on their face and they're just talking this is um, like this I can focus on just what people talk and not like how they stitch and what they do next and the stuff like that so I will be filming a tag but uh, probably it will go out um, in the middle of the week or next week because I don't know how good I will be <laughs> at editing like two videos in a row like this video and next one uh, also I will be doing arbitrary August and I will spin my wheel right now working on it and uh, see let's see how it goes so that's it for now if you enjoyed this video give me a like please uh, subscribe to the channel tell about it uh, to your friends and family <laughs> uh, yeah and uh, see you in two weeks bye bye